Good morning. Goodness. You all right, Jake? Yeah, sorry, man. I'm just shaking up my drink. Oh, my gosh. It looks white with a background, but it, it's a green cup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to episode 48 of the Coffee Squad podcast. This is part five of our Security 101 series. Today, we are discussing security systems for homes and businesses. We are joined with a special guest, Isaiah from Madrona Digital. Uh, first, we're going to start with what we're drinking, introduce our guests, talk about what's going on around the world in the U.S., and then we'll go ahead and jump into the main topic, which is security systems, which is a lot of people I know ask me and Jake, I know a lot of people ask you about it. So I think this is going to be a good episode. So uh, Jake, since you do have a, a history with Isaiah, I'll go ahead and let you kind of introduce him. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Isaiah has worked, you know, with some of our past, uh, with a past company of Ray and I um, did a major, major uh, project for us. And he is like our go-to guy. Uh, and I shouldn't just say him, but Madrona Digital is our go-to guy when it comes to security systems, anything digital and technical, um, complete professionals and talk about a wicked smart guy. So let me just, you know, for our listeners out there, tell, tell them just a little bit about Isaiah. So great American cool little story. So uh, Isaiah was interested in engineering and, and electronics and anything mechanical from like an early age. Um, and he began reading like spy novels and he was hooked on security ideas in these gadgets. Uh, so the concept of spy cameras and perimeter security caused him to research what was actually possible. And then it came time for him to do experiments with these technical ideas and put them into working models. And so as a young, like budding technical entrepreneur, he was tasked with securing a valuable art collection. And through his research and presentation of data, he began to flourish as a creative protection consultant. So uh, with a pr prospective client, they said they didn't feel secure enough with a $10,000 alarm system that they had installed. So Isaiah provided a boost of confidence with some of the, a few improvements that allowed the client to sleep better at night. Uh, he has led technical design and installation teams through many successful residential and commercial integration projects, both here in the U.S. and over in Europe. He is a graduate of Gonzaga University and holds a degree in music and psychology. So Gonzaga. Yes, I was, I was gonna let that slide. Oh come on, you gotta give it to me. Um, I don't know why I always say I've always had Gonzaga in my head. Uh, so you'll have to. All right, you're from California. So. Yeah, you'll. Uh, but hey, I mean they are ranked number one uh, in the NCAA for their basketball. They have a strong basketball team. I don't know, yep. Isaiah. Are you a, a basketball fan of theirs? Or yeah, huge. Although it's funny, I mean when I was there, it was the uh, really the first year. My senior year was the first year we went to the big dance. So it wasn't, I mean, it was, a, it was a big part of us there and still a great part today, but it was interesting because at the time it wasn't as, as big of a deal as it is now. It's like the basketball school. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, to me, it's like this time, I mean, it seems like a tiny little school, but man, they're just a powerhouse in basketball. I'd say the last five plus years, probably longer than that. Probably closer but, to 15, 20. So, um, yeah, anything I missed, Isaiah, on you. No, I mean, no, thank you. Appreciate it. That was good. I, I, I think like a, the American dream, right? Reading spine hobbles, getting interested yeah. in it, toying around, tinkering, um, and building like your own little stuff, man, and creating solutions for people. And I think that's what it's all about. <laughs> and that's really what security is about, you know, is it, solving people's problems and making them feel safe and secure. Absolutely. So, yeah, I see the uh, little Yoda behind you. I mean, you're a Star Wars fan, so, you know, it's a good start. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Jake, Jake, do you know what Star Wars is? You know, Will, I am not a sci-fi guy. So I actually watched <laughs> Star Wars for the first time with my I have three boys, Isaiah. Um, and my wife loves it. She tried to get me watching when we were first married and I fell asleep. Uh, Man, you're I, letting them down. So they watched it. Uh I only let them watch like the first one because I think it's like BG thirteen at the time. Uh we did so, watch uh what's the um which first one? Yeah, I was gonna ask which first one. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I, one, I remember the one from '77 or the probably, the yeah. abomination that came out in like the, like the '90s. Know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I remember looking at my wife like after it was done. I was like, I don't understand the big deal of this <laughs> at all. And she's like, Well, you know, back when this was filmed, this was a huge deal. But now, you know, everything is kind of blossomed off of that. Well, um, based on that comment, I'm going to have to excuse myself from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> However, what's the new show? It's a series out. Mandalorian. Especially Mandalorian. Now that is awesome. So. Yep, I've spoken. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> so nice. uh, I don't know if I redeem myself a little bit, Isaiah. If we can, well, if we can continue on with Mandalorian. Well, uh, we'll give we'll give you a little bit of road there. Well, this thank is you. no way. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna move on. Before we get started, I did want to say uh, give a shout out to a friend of the show, Nate Boyer. He is uh, raising money for Dell Children's Heart Program by running the Austin Marathon Valentine's Day weekend. So if you'd like to donate, we're going to put the uh, GoFundMe page campaign link in our notes. So just uh, go to our notes and click it if you want to donate to his cause. It's a good cause to help the uh, Tex or Austin Hospital Heart Program. So, yeah. Nate's a great dude. I don't know. Uh, Isaiah, uh, yeah. he was a long snapper up there, short time with uh, with the Seahawks there. But uh, he was also a Green Beret. I went through the Q course with him. Um, and I, I love what he's doing. So we'll have Nate on later in the year. So please, uh, if you're listening and have a little extra cash in your wallet, uh, throw it out there. I, I think it's a great program and it's going to children. Yep. So. Good cause. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Jake, I'll start with you. What kind of fancy keto balanced water keto? Did you just say keto? Keto. Yeah. Hey, you said Gonzaga. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> so hey, I just want you to know, man, I started off the year at like 215, <laughs> a little over. I'm down to 201 as of yesterday. Wow. Good yeah. job. Yeah, I'm starving myself at night. My wife yeah. wants everything down. Um, but no, so I have a little keto. I don't even know what flavor this is. I just mixed it right before the show. Um, and then, again, Brian, man. Uh, Brian, if you're still listening, love the Waterloo. So this is a strawberry uh, drink right now, like non-flavored, zero, or it is flavored, zero sugar, uh, a little sparkly drink. So, um, yeah, Isaiah, I don't drink coffee. I've never gotten in the taste of it it's just uh not one of those things so road's uh, getting shorter again i know i know <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna let me come out <laughs> okay, uh, i'm gonna land it at sea tech and they're gonna be like no get back on the plane i don't care yeah. you can be covid free but still get back on yeah. the plane you can so. have an alert on the uh, facial recognition nope this guy's not allowed yeah um so uh, the smell of coffee if that counts no not really no all right, Isaiah, what are you drinking? I'm just drinking good old black Starbucks. Kind of good. figured Starbucks up there, yeah. Good, nice drip coffee, super tasty. Yeah. And I mean, Brian, before the show, you and I were talking a little bit, you know, like Seattle has a ton of great coffee, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of really great little places and a lot of oh yeah. A lot of great roasteries and things. It just uh this is my standard. They kind of started the coffee reg revolution in what the mid nineties, early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. And it moved slowly, but surely moved East. And I remember when I was stationed out here, when I first got here, there's no Starbucks, no uh, other than a black cup of diner coffee. You couldn't find coffee out oh, yeah. here. <laughs> now it's everywhere, but back yeah. then it wasn't yeah. as good. So it took a few years to finally get here. So I remember it came out like, uh, like California. We had Java city. That was like oh, yeah. the big thing in the town that I lived in. And then, you can't find a job city anymore. It's it's all Starbucks, you know. Um, but what a great! I mean, the story of Starbucks I think is a great story in and of itself, um, and how they took this idea and just flourished with it and ran with it, and now it's global. It's a that's yeah, fun. So, all right, Will, wow us. Hey, oh Isaiah, if Will says anything real snobby, just do a little pinkies, pinkies up. up. Yeah. Well, he likes coffee too. And I drink my coffee black, but because I talk about the tasty notes, they assume I'm foo-foo coffee, but I drink it black. But anyways, my dad sent me this. It's a VTAC Berserker blend. It's uh, made especially for Viking tactics from Black Rifle Coffee Company. It's a dark roast. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty good. It says that it can keep you caffeinated in the fight. So I'm enjoying it. It's a little darker than I knew. I prefer a lighter roast most of the time, but it's it's good. And then, Jake, I got a special. I found this in the store for you yesterday. I don't know if you can see it here. It's a Coca-Cola with coffee. And I know you drink Coke, so I'm going to try it for you. And if it's not, not too strong. Not as you talk. As if you it's, well, yeah, I mean, you'll be off it in a couple of weeks, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> once the coffee, if, if, if it's not too coffee, you know, I'll let you know and you can give it a try. They also have some more foo-foo ones this is just dark blend they also have like a caramel and a vanilla type one so that'll be a little sweeter for your delicate palate so thank you uh, I'm, I'm shocked you didn't tell isaiah like yeah it has hints of nutmeg and raspberry and an oak flavored you know no, no, no. um like you normally do <laughs> uh, i don't know again i'm not a coffee drinker but i was on the black rifle 
coffee site the other day and they make hot chocolate. I'm not really a hot chocolate drinker either, but uh, they make a hot chocolate uh, with the, like the old smoke grenade. So uh, I might send that to you, Will. So, well, cool. So we got some stuff kind of, uh, I don't know. Do we want a serious question? Kind of a lighthearted mm. question. That's interesting. It's like Coke with the coffee aftertaste. It's interesting. Hmm. All right. Sounds anyways, good. we'll move on. Uh, let's do, uh, I don't know. It's well, Super Bowl weekend. So it is. Uh, I, I know. His, yeah. Isaiah is a, a Seahawks fan a little bit. I know he's not a huge sports fan, but uh, unfortunately the good guys didn't win this year. Um, I know the but Niners this, are out. The Niners are relevant like once every couple decades. <laughs> but anyways, uh, are you going to watch the Super Bowl this weekend? And if so, who do you think? Who's your pick? Uh, you know, probably not, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. We'll probably look at the uh, halftime show and maybe the second half of it. Uh, I don't really have a – I've never really liked either of those teams. Uh, my dad's, yeah. you know, spent a lot of time in Kansas, so maybe I'll – Maybe I'll put a put a cheer up for them, but uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't really know anything about either of those teams. Sounds sounds sad, being that they're both in the Super Bowl, but that's sort of where where I'm at with it. <laughs> oh, I totally understand. Especially this year, I didn't follow football like I normally do. So, I mean, other than just the knowledge of who's on the team, I don't know a lot about them. Yeah. Jake, I know you're. I know you're probably going to go for Tom Brady since he's a Bay boy. I am. So I like Tom Brady. Uh, I like to met. I mean, I am a Niners fan, and the Chiefs had a hell of a comeback last year against the Niners. Um, I lost quite a bit of money on that game, um, <laughs> quite a still, bit. My wife doesn't listen to this on podcast, that. Yeah. so, uh, you know, it was uh, – I was in Mississippi watching the game um, when I was working out there, and, uh, yeah, it was uh, sitting at a bar, a lot of Kansas City fans, and the Niners had it in the bag till the, till the fourth quarter, man, and blew it which blew my bank account too. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't like Tom Brady. I, I love, I think Tom Brady, I think most people can agree, agree that he's one of one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yeah. And I think he's showing it where, um, you know, Tampa Bay had a decent team last year, um, but coming in this year and um, take him to the Super Bowl, I think it's awesome. So I'd love to see him win the Super Bowl and, and hang it up. So um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm quite, I just want a good game. I I like both of you guys. I haven't watched. I watch a little bit of football. Uh, I just I think since the military, it you have bigger things, better things. Maybe as you grow up too, like you don't have the time that I invested as a you know the teenager in my early twenties um, with it. But I just hope for a good game and I hope for great commercials. I like I'm more excited. Like <laughs> what's, what's Doritos going to do this year? Because they they seem to me to always have like the best ads. So. Uh, I just hope all the ads are really light and fun because that's yeah. what we, that's what we need. We don't. I don't want to see any more political ads. I just want to see Doritos and maybe yeah, some, maybe some Clydesdales go running by or whatever it is. I don't care. Something fun yeah. and nice and, and American to make me feel good. Yeah. Go Daddy. Yeah. We'll see what Go Daddy does. They usually do something. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh what happens. So um, cool. I think uh, so. Will, who are you rooting for? Four? Uh, I really haven't decided yet. I'm kind of, I really don't care who wins as long as it's a good game. I don't like either team particularly. If I probably had to choose, it'd probably be Kansas City okay. because I'm not a big fan of Bruce Arians. He's the coach for the Cardinals, and he's just kind of a blowhard, is my opinion. But he used to coach, and in, in full disclosure, he used to coach for the Cardinals, Arizona, and their arrival of Seattle's. And obviously, I'm a Seahawks fan, and he was kind of a uh, I didn't like him as a coach then. Maybe if he was my coach, it'd be different because, you know, I didn't like Pete Carroll if he became the Seahawks coach. But anyways, I didn't like the way he acted and his blowhardness and, and stuff like that. I'm sure if he was the coach for the Seahawks, I would, but whatever. So between him and Brady, I'm not really a fan. So Sounds like you need a hug. I mean, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> well, cool. All right. So let's, let's uh, move on to this week's topic. You know, it's – Security systems. We've got a lot of good information. Uh, Isaiah's probably forgotten more than Jake and I will ever know about security systems. So when we talk about security systems, uh, what's the first thing Isaiah that that you have your clients look at? Yeah, I mean, I mean, realistically, it's it's finding out what they're concerned about first. 
Yep. You know, what, what made them look for security? You know, when you, when you, when you start approaching these things, you know, sometimes it's just the client saying, Hey, look, I, I, as sort of my story said there, you know, I can't sleep at night. I, I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on outside my house. Right. And, and, and that's, that in and of itself is probably the most important thing as far as a security professional goes is listening to the client, listening to what they're worried about. If it's a business, you know, maybe they, maybe they had some employee theft or maybe they had an employee threatened in the parking lot or, or, or whatever it is, but really finding out what they're concerned about. It's very easy to go down the path of everything's wrong and everything's scary and you should buy a whole bunch of stuff. It's much more difficult to find out what, what's really on their mind and then look to folks like you guys to do some sort of an assessment or myself doing a much more simple assessment on top of what they said to find out if there's some other concerns that, that we need to look at. I, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Like, I think that's what sets a good company apart from a, a bad or shady company, in my opinion. And there's a lot of security companies out there that will just sell you stuff and just want to sell you stuff because it's you know up in their bottom line. And I think what makes a great security company and a good security consultant is one who actually listens and helps that client understand, you know, we use the same terminology, you know, on, on the physical side of the house is what keeps you up at night, you know, yep. once we address that and then we can, you know, take that one little thing and then spread it out and uh, help build a, you know, a system, a, a whole complete system with the physical and the technical side there. Yeah. Um, you know, and just so our listeners know, this is the the one one series. So I, I know I say you've done a lot of high net worth individuals, not just their companies, but also their personal uh, residences as well. And so have we. Um, and so I don't think it matters if you're a millionaire, a billionaire, or your average Joe, you can apply the same things that we're going to talk about uh, Absolutely. to yourself. So um, Absolutely. And, and technology today has made that possible. I mean, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I, I started doing security, it really was only high net worth individuals that could afford to do any of this stuff. You know, cameras, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, you know, average Joe's not going to do that. Yeah. So nowadays, I mean, you've got all sorts of things out there that, that, can, that can make a real difference for everybody. And all of the same data, all of the same math, all the same design techniques apply across the board. So you, you mentioned data. Um, I think that's an important step too. And, you know, so what's a, after you, you've had them identify of what's important, um, what's the next step there? Well, usually for us, the next step is to really walk the property or walk the, uh, walk the business and, and, and look for things that are a problem. And, and we, depending on the client, obviously, but, but in almost all cases, we walk it at two times. We walk it during a busy time, you know, middle of the afternoon, especially if it's a business in a, in a you know, downtown area or something. And then we walk it late at night and we walk it late at night, you know, sit in the back in a car and watch what happens for an hour. You know, are the things that the client said really something to worry about? Is, is there really people in the parking lot at night or, you know, what, what are those concerns? And that really helps us shape what kind of thing we're going to put in, whether that's cameras or whether that's some sort of a burglary system or, or something else. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny because I think on the technical side and the physical side, there's, there's a lot of similarities. We do the exact same thing. Yeah. We'll, we'll visit at various hours of the day, you know, like, hey, and some of it is, can, can we penetrate this or what's it look like? Um, do they have lights on? Are the lights working? Is there, you know, all yeah. those same um, similarities that, that you're talking about on the technical side uh, is, is done on the physical side. And then, uh, you know, we look at the data, you know, what's the crime rate say, what's, what's been happening, not only at their specific location, but a bubble around that. Yeah. Uh, so um, you, you mentioned the, the different types of systems. Can you talk to our listeners and viewers out there of, you know, the different types of systems out there that, uh, that are available? Yeah, I mean, it really falls into sort of three categories. You have surveillance and, you know, surveillance is, is, you know, today there's lots of concern about personal privacy and AI and things like that. But at just a, a very basic level, it, it gives you a view into some area. What's going on? Is it is it my gate? Is it my front door? Is it what is it? Is it you know, very simply, it gives you a view and, and maybe a recording of, of what happened. Um, Second is burglary systems or, or 
inner perimeter systems. Um, essentially, you know, all your windows, did somebody break my glass? Did my door get left unlocked at a business and it blew open in the wind? What, what that gives you the ability to call the police when something happens. Um, and, you know, we'll revisit some of those things a little bit later, but that's sort of the second one. The last one is kind of life safety systems. And this is something that doesn't often get talked about in the security um, window, but it's a really important thing. You know, are all the smoke detectors good? Do I have the ability to detect carbon monoxide? Um, if I'm an older client, do I have a way to get to a phone when there's a problem? If I'm a business owner, in a publicly open business that's late at night, do I have a storeroom or something that they can duck into and lock the door? You know, those are kind of the three things, watching and kind of knowing what's going on, being able to detect when someone enters somewhere they shouldn't, and then making sure that the people are safe that are there. I think that's, a, that's an awesome little simplified breakdown uh, yep. of the system. So um, I think, Will, I know we've talked about you know, different systems, but, and I, I get this question a lot is like, how do you know what system to use? And for like a basic homeowner, you know, like you said, you know, in the beginning, uh, as we talked about it, there's so technology has changed so much and it's available to the average Joe out there. You know, you have ring, you have simply safe, um, ADT, you know, uh, so many different like, commercialized systems for the average homeowner. How do you know, which, how do you know what the right company is? Sure. I think, I mean, I think it goes back to that first thing of finding out what the, the client wants, you know, um, and then looking at that second thing of, of what do they really, do they really need? Right. So I think primarily finding the right company is, is choosing a company that can fit your budget and, and knowing what that is. So if you're the average Joe, you know, you're, you're looking for an ADT or you're looking to do some things yourself. Right, you're looking for some simple things, good reputable company that has the manpower to pull it off and pull it off affordably. Um, if you're a business, you know, same sort of thing. A smaller business, you're you're looking for that company that has the manpower to to pull these things off and and has the reputation. Um, if you have a higher budget, then you're looking for someone that has more time to listen to you. Um, and and that's really that's really the thing. Again, the technology stays the same, but you know, really good solid method is almost as good as 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 really good analysis. And what I mean by that is, is you know, if you've got a square building and it's your company, and you put a camera on all four corners and a camera at the door and a basic burglary system, which is what ADT might do or something similar, Brinks or whatever, you've already gone a long ways down that path. Um, and those are probably the same sort of things that we might find in a, in, in a, in an analysis of what, what should be there. So again, you know, choosing the company based on your budget, if you're, if you're going out there and you're finding a really high end art protection company and really you just want a nest doorbell, it's not going to go well for you and you'll be disappointed by the, <laughs> you know, by the end result. Yeah. yeah. So, so you talked about like, you know, choosing, we, we talked about a couple of the companies, is there a way to kind of determine which one's more dependable or which one has a better response time other than just calling around and doing your research or just doing your due diligence or? Well, I would say this. So one of the misnomers that's out there is that, you know, every alarm company monitors their own system. And what I mean by monitoring is this is the, you know, your alarm's going off. You have 30 seconds to disarm it from your keypad. And if you don't, this, this company calls you, whoever that, that company may be. There's very few of those things. Uh, they all use the same computers. They all use the same software. And with today's technology, realistically, they all have about the same response time. They all work very similarly. So what I would suggest is, is call a few. You know, I mean, roofers and plumbers always say to get, you know, three bids. Mm -hmm. I would say at least call three different companies and <laughs> you have to feel good. You have to feel trust in that person. Um, and, you know, if you're on the phone for 30 minutes waiting to talk to somebody, you're not going to feel very good knowing that probably you're going to be on the phone for 30 minutes when something's happening at your house. Yeah. So that's really the key is, is comfort. And in the lower budget, that that comfort is really, really important. 
um, because you've got to trust that that system's going to going to do it, and then that person on the other end of the line is actually going to hear what you say. Yeah. I think another like misnomer too that's out there quite a bit is well, I have an alarm system, um, and they're going to call me. You know, I have whatever it is, thirty seconds, fifteen seconds, whatever you know that that time is from the time the alarm goes off to the time that you have to enter your code, um, and and you get the phone call. Um, a lot of people think like, okay, well, that's the response time where I'm going to get help. You know, that nope. That's the first trigger. You know, that, that's the first yeah. step. In. You know, your alarm goes off, then you wait 30, we'll just say 30 seconds is the average, you know, time to put in your thing. Then you're going to get a call, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 seconds later. So let's just say for quick, easy math, because I'm not the smartest guy, we're, we're almost at a minute, right? So let's just throw a minute out there by the time that alarm goes off um, and you're on the phone. Yep. Then the alarm if, company is going to call the dispatchers. That's going to go to the dispatcher yep. depending on where you live is and depending on what's going on and how far the nearest officer is to mm-hmm. respond to that could be. And, and where I live, because my alarm was tripped a few times uh, on accident and I don't remember my passwords or passcodes very well. <laughs> Neither does my wife. So uh, the cops have been here twice uh, over the last few years. And I'd say the average is five minutes. Um, yeah. But I yep. live in a tiny little town, right? Uh, tiny little town. There's like 15,000, but we always have six police officers on patrol all the time. Uh, most people don't have that. And no. so uh, a good way to also look at response time is you know, call your local police or sheriff's department too and ask them, hey, I live here. On average, what is the response time? And, and they should have the data and they can tell you, again, it all depends on what's going on. Uh, no one has a crystal ball. There could be a, a major accident or um, something else going on where you know that, those police officers are responding on the opposite side of town. So It also depends uh, on the type of call too. So you know, a, a simple burglary call may be responded to differently than a panic call. Um, exactly. You know, these, these alarms have that panic button. People mm-hmm. wonder what that is. They should they should know what that is. That's what you push to say come now. That's a different a different response, right? The other one, of course, is fire. Fire is a non recallable response in most states, meaning that alarm system detects a fire and it goes off. You've got thirty seconds to say that it's your toaster. And then they're coming, and that yep. response may be significantly different than than what you know a, a police response would be for a simple burglary. Mm-hmm. And again, business versus home is different too, right? So business is sort of a secondary response usually, um, whereas a, a you know life uh, you know being in a in a home is usually a quicker response. But you're right. I mean, it's it, it we see somewhere between five mm-hmm. to thirty minutes for most of our clients. Yeah, I know. Uh, am I? But the business that I, I used to be a part of, we had a panic alarm and they would accidentally set it off at least two or three times a year. And most times it would take about 30 minutes for somebody to come up. But I live out in the county and, it you know, unless the deputy's right around the corner, it's going to take them a while to get across the county. So, yeah, yeah. And especially during the day with the traffic and stuff like that. So, yeah. 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 Another. I know we uh, talked about layers in our last couple episodes with uh, Adam. Uh, it sounds like when you're setting up your security camera system, you need to have, or your security system for technical wise, it sounds like we need to have layers too. Can you kind of go over that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we look at it very similarly, I think, I don't know. I didn't see that particular episode, but um, we've worked on similar projects in which this is the case. And and I think that's why we worked well together in the past. You know, you really have to look at your property or your business as layers. So if you start with the outside, that outside layer is the outer perimeter. You know, in a home, that's your fence line. That's your uh, the end of your driveway. You know, if you're in a condo, that's the end of where that locked door is that that is uh, you know shared by everyone in the condo. If it's your business, it's your parking lot. It's the outer piece. And looking at that and saying, you know, what issues am I having? You know, is my parking lot lit well? Is there a camera on it? Do we have thefts in the parking lot? Or if you're at home, does you know, does someone steal my mail, or do I have people coming into my yard to, to take a look at you know my things or whatever? You know, the inner layer is really that that front door, and I use that as a, as a, uh, an example mainly because of all the technologies that we're now used to the you know the rings, the nests, etc. But but that is an example of that inner layer. So your, your, your windows, all of the things that would let somebody into your house and, and how, do you, how do you deal with that? 
And then the last is sort of you yourself and your maybe your art or maybe you have a, your dad's watch that you want to protect or whatever the things are internal to the house that are important to you. You know, I we all here travel quite a bit. I have, you know, a wife and a, and a mother and two beautiful little girls at home. You got to protect those those things, right? And so, what additional layers do I have? What what additional things do I do for that that last layer inside? I think for our listeners, hopefully, you know, from and if you haven't listened before, and now you're just coming on, uh, this is a, a a series that we're doing. We started with a you know episode one of the uh, Security One Hundred and One series, and if you go back and listen, hopefully, uh, everyone will notice how these layers. Uh, not just the layers, but the, the series are building upon themselves. You know, we've mm-hmm. talked about outside in the terminology and everything. And now we talked about septed uh, last week, a little bit. Um, so hopefully for our listeners and viewers out there, they're actually getting an understanding. Of, okay. <clears throat> we're building this foundation up, you know, uh, and now it, we're talking about security systems and how to implement those. So um I just kind of want to put that out there for our listeners. Kind of like, okay, this is why we're tying all this together. And we've built the series out the way that we have. So we're talking about all these security systems and and how they interact together. So what is the, what, what components kind of make up a security system? I know you've talked about cameras and glass breaks and stuff like that. So what exactly is it that you're talking about is can kind of break down the components of security system? Yeah. So let's look at, let's look at those three different, three different types of, of systems and kind of put, put the components in there. So cameras are probably the one that, that, you know, we've, we've talked the most about so far. Um, you know, there's really a lot of cameras out there these days at any budget. I mean, you've got, you know, hundred dollar things that you can stick on the side of your house that have a solar panel and you don't have to do anything. They just, they just work right. Um, all the way to, you know, 360 degree cameras that are able to, you know, look at the entire situation. Um, I will sort of group in with that lighting, um, without Mm -hmm. lights, cameras are useless. So one of the biggest things we work with, with our clients is, you know, great. I just, maybe they just bought a whole bunch of nest cams and they don't work at night. How come? Well, they need light. So you know, making sure that there's good lighting for for everything to do with the camera. So those really go together. Um, The last sort of component in that category is, are are you just going to watch them? So you hear a noise at night and you you want your phone to show you what what that noise is, or do you want to record it so you can go back later and and check something out? Maybe, you you know, theft problem, or maybe your business owner and you want to keep track of the count of people coming in or out or whatever, whatever the deal there. So those are really the three kind of components, cameras, you know, lighting and then, and then the recording stuff, you know, there's an additional component that you can use in there that comes from the next category, which is all these kind of uh, glass breaks and motion detectors and things like that. But those can be integrated with the cameras. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, you have your alarm go off and now all the cameras are recording. Whereas before they weren't recording because why use up hard drive space with no alarm or, or something like that. Um, If we talk about the kind of components of a burglary system, you know, you've got a motion detector, right? A motion detector detects using very, very simple technology. So, you know, in some of these new systems, you get these wireless things and you stick them on your your table or whatever, and they're supposed to protect (laughs) you. Um, Very, very simple technology, but it is works. It works very, very well. You know, it's been around for- Tell a spider crawls over the sensor. (laughs) Tell a spider crawls over the sensor, or maybe you decided to make pizza and your oven is warm, and then you go to bed and set your alarm, and your alarm company put the motion detector facing your your oven, and now you have an alarm going off. (laughs) There's there's a robber in my kitchen, but it's really just a hot pizza. Um, I mean, I've also seen like uh, older homes, right? Uh, you know, the motion detectors that a lot of people put up in their corners uh, yep. of, of their walls uh, and older homes, sometimes at night when the air conditioning or the heat comes on, it blows that door oh, yeah. open or shut a little bit, false yeah. alarm, or they have it too low. And so their dog or their cat is walking yep. around and, and put it up. So again, if you're, you know, a homeowner and you're using one of these uh, systems, Hey, they're, well, I'm not saying don't use them. Just be mindful of where you're placing these, these objects, these products, um, and how you're home and, you know, what's going on. Uh, so you don't have a lot of false alarms. And that's, I mean, that's a really good point. I would say, you know, if you're going to do this yourself, which is totally possible, you're going to use the simply safe or you're going to use something else like it. 
you know, there's a reason it came with a really big manual or, or there's a reason it came with a really big PDF document that you have to read through it. It isn't as simple as they show in the commercial where the nice young man just kind of throws the thing out there and then his wife goes over and arms it and they feel happy and it's wonderful. There's actually like 20 pages of where to put it and where not to put it and please don't do this and please do that. So just, you know, there is knowledge that's needed to put these things in. And, and as simple as a lot of these companies make it, you do have to spend a little time to, to know what you're doing so that you have a, you have a good system. I think for the dads out there, you can kind of relate like the first time you bought a crib for your child, right? Uh, for the moms and dads out there. I remember like I threw the directions to the side, like it's a crib. I can build this thing. And then like, man, I'm trying to put these two pieces together and it's not working. So uh, alarm system size, <laughs> this point. Uh, read the manual. Why do uh, I have all these extra screws? What's this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't put it upside down. Don't put it somewhere like read the manual. And, uh, you know, you can always, uh, you know, reach out, reach out to security professionals and, um, and they can help. So. Yeah. So if we continue down the kind of list of components, you know, you then have, you have uh, contacts they're called, right. And it's just a little switch and it might be a magnet. It might be a physical switch and those go on your windows and doors. So your door opens, switch, you know, switch goes and the alarm goes off or, or whatever the, the case may be. Um, you know, glass breaks are another big one. Um, glass breaks are a pretty simple device, you know, a little microphone. And if it hears a, you know, a sudden sound of, of, of you know, breaking glass is a, is a very simple sound to recognize. Mm -hmm. Boom, it hears that and, and, it, and it does a similar thing. It sets off the alarm. Um, you know, those are really the main pieces that are in these things. You know, you look at some of the more advanced systems, they start adding radar, right? So some of the kind of higher end do it yourself as well as the higher end alarm systems that we put in, radar is really amazing because it can actually see the size of a person, right? And mm -hmm. it can tell what's going on. And then maybe it also has a thermal sensor that knows that you're 96.7 degrees. So you are a person instead of 104 and it's a little dog running around or, or whatever. Um, those sensors get really, really smart. And it's, again, as I said, kind of in the beginning, it's not just for the highest end systems. These sensors are available for, for, for most people these days too. Um, the last sort of, you know, kind of pair of them or, or maybe three of them are, are uh, in that life safety category. Um, smoke detectors are super important. You just can't have enough of them. Um, most of them today come along with a, with a carbon monoxide sensor mm -hmm. um, or a carbon dioxide sensor. It's just, it's really important to have a lot of them in your house. And, and you know, uh, real estate agents, when they sell you your home or, or talk to you, will talk to you about code and what's required. You know, you're supposed to have a smoke detector in your bedroom and you're supposed to have a smoke detector in the hallway outside your bedroom. Sure. But you should also have them everywhere. That's a room, you know, okay. maybe not in your kitchen, uh, especially if you're, if you're me and the, and the, and the, yep. way, the way that I cook, but um, you know, you need to have those things around so that, that, that you're safe. Um, and then similarly panic alarms, you know, this is something that most people forget, look over. Um, you know, if you're, if you're over the age of 30, you probably have a chance of a heart issue. And, you know, chances are it's going to be in a room where you're alone and you don't have the ability to to grab a cell phone. So having some version of one of these, you know, panic buttons, ADT, Simply Safe, companies like us, we all offer some version of that. And these aren't expensive. It's not something that you're, you know, paying a lot for. It's just a little you know, a little button that you can mm -hmm. push that, that can save your life. You're, you know, you're working out or whatever, and you got to, you got to, you got something happen. So think, think of the life alert I've fallen. I can't get up. That's, the, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what was going on in the back of my head there. This is a <laughs> similar scenario to that, but it's linked to your alarm. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's, you're, you're not paying an additional monthly fee. Um, the life alert scenario is is really important as you get you know into your upper years because there's a whole nother set of services that come with that. The ability to have two way communication, etc. Mm -hmm. This is really just a hey, I you know I really have I've fallen and I can't get up and and I can't call you back. Please come help me. That kind of that yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you talked a lot about cameras, and I'm kind of interested in that. I know Jake, you've got a camera system. I. I can't confirm or deny whether or not I do. I haven't chosen exactly what I want yet. So can you kind of go over what the camera system is that you sure. that you kind of look for and what what exactly their their makeup is? Sure. Well, my camera system is really just to alert if you show up. 
Oh, okay. Well, I got a German Shepherd for that. I programmed it. So if you show up, (laughs) I I get an alert on my phone, man. So I like your German Shepherd scenario. We had a we had a client in London that had a had a had a sign up that said, "My German Shepherd can make it to this fence in three seconds." Mm -hmm. And you, (laughs) (laughs) it's great though, right? I mean, people are terrified of dogs, especially like shepherds, the Malinois, you know, pit bulls. Um, I would say, hey, if you can't afford an alarm system, get a dog. Yep. (laughs) Well, look. I think the uh, cameras really fall into two categories, wired and wireless. Um, and, you know, uh, when you when you look at that, that's that really generally has to do with how you're going to install it. And that's it. You know, there's there's wired and wireless cameras that are 100 bucks and 40,000 bucks. It, it really has to do with what do you what do you have the ability to do in your house or your business? You know, don't feel bad if you have to go wireless because. You, you need it to fit your budget. You need to feel comfortable with it. Um, that being said, you know, how do you choose this? Wireless is not as reliable. It relies on a network connection. It relies on a wireless network connection. It relies on, I mean, I'm sure we've all, you know, called to, you know, taken the call of how do I reset my Comcast modem because my internet's not working, right? Mm-hmm. That is, if you're, you know, putting your entire security system on that or your entire camera system on that, that's something that you you, you have to deal with. Wired, on the other hand, is, is very solid, um, but it requires, you know, drilling holes. It requires getting a wire to it. Um, let's look at coverage a little bit with those two different cameras. Um, you know, you really have to sort of take two views of this. And again, some of this might be based on budget or, or might be based on the kind of uh, security problems you're having, but you know, do you really want to cover everything around your house or your business in every corner, or are you really just trying to pick up the specific areas that are that are an issue? You know, maybe you've got a, a dumpster area behind your business. Maybe you've got a, a parking lot that your you know your employees don't feel good about going um, in late at night, um, or maybe you want to make sure that you have you're gone a lot and you want to make sure that you can see everywhere around your house. Choosing that coverage is is really important. Um, but you know, more important than coverage is really the resolution of the cameras. Um, and this is a really big deal. It, there's two resolutions that you need to look at. One is what's the resolution of the camera? Can I see anything with it? But more importantly, what's being recorded on the other end? Um, there's a lot of internet companies right now selling cameras where they talk about, you know, 4k cameras, or they talk about a thousand eighty line cameras, but then they're only recording at 300 lines. Yep. What that means is, is that, you know, you're watching someone break into your car and you can see who they are. And then you go to export that video and give it to the police and they can't even tell it's a person. It's just yep. a shadow. Um, that's just completely useless. Right. So it's really knowing the product and, and, and trusting the, the person. Um, in the notes here, we talk a little we were looking at pixels per foot. And, and that's something that you should think about based on what you're trying to do with these cameras. Right. There's three levels. There's, can I tell it's a person? And and that's sort of level one, right? And there's a certain number of of pixels per foot. What that means is, is the camera has a certain number of pixels and you're looking out at an angle into a yard, let's say. And you take the number of pixels that the camera has across the width of the yard. So let's say there's a thousand pixels and my yard is 100 feet wide. Well, that's 10 pixels per foot, right? That's not bad, but it's really not very good either. I could tell it's a person coming, but I wouldn't be able to recognize who that person was. And I certainly couldn't provide any sort of footage to the police to show them who it is. The second is is that thing of, I can actually see them. And if I have met that person before, I would recognize who who they are. The last is facial recognition. That's the highest amount of pixels per foot. You know, that's where nobody has met you before, but they can tell who you are by that by that image. In most people's cases, that's just not important. You know, it, it, it's really those first two categories that that most most businesses and most people are concerned about. And then maybe when you get up close to your front door, let's say for Amazon shipments or whatever, Mm -hmm. then you have that Nest camera or that Ring or that 
access camera or whatever you're using at the door that, that then gives you that facial recognition so you can see who dropped the package off or who ran off with the, with the package. Um, let's talk about just a couple other quick things. Motion activation is super important. Um, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about the 4K camera. That's a lot of data, a lot of data. So if that camera is recording 24 hours a day, you're going to be just be eating a hard drive for no reason. Um, so motion activated, it sees a little bit of a change in the picture and it, boom, turns on uh, and gives you that, that view of the, of the spider doing the web or, <laughs> or the person coming into your, into your uh, business. Um, and the, so that's the, the same technology of like a trail cam. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And we've all seen it. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a cool thing to have and it, it makes a huge difference in, in your system. It's like your ring doorbells, same thing. You know? Yep, exactly. Exactly. What about night vision? Um, Is that something that a lot of people put on their cameras or? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, there, there's a, goes back to my comment earlier about having lighting. Um, you know, lighting out there is really important because the cameras, when they go into a night vision mode, and, and I think NAS does that. Most ring cameras do that. A lot of cameras get night vision. Basically, what they do is they go to black and white. Uh, it's much easier to see in black and white than it is to see in color at night. Um, and then they use a little infrared illuminator. You know, if you look at some of these Nest cams and things, you see that little red ring mm -hmm. that's shooting out a certain distance, maybe 30, 40 feet or maybe 80 feet or something. And that illuminates in that black and white so that you can see. The, the problem with night vision is that it distorts colors. So if you're wearing a red sweatshirt, and you're breaking into someone's car, the person watching you from that night vision camera sees a person in a white sweatshirt. Um, that's a huge problem, right? Yep. So you talk to the police and you say, yeah, this person in a white sweatshirt was you know, in the neighborhood and they're, you know, they ran off. That's what they're gonna look for instead of a person in a red sweatshirt. So night vision is super important, but you, know, you gotta use it carefully. It's better to have good lighting. I know I always layered it so I'd have motion detecting camera with motion detecting lights. So the lights would kind of yeah. flood with the camera. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, did, go ahead, Jake. Uh, you know, for the, we, we've talked about the do it yourself birds right out there a little bit. Um, and I'm one of those people. So just remember when you're putting up these cameras too, the lighting, you know, and I, Isaiah's mentioned lighting quite a bit and where you put your lights, you know, at nighttime, if you have a camera and you put a light that's going to drown out your camera, your camera's loose. So, you know, when you're, when you're looking for, you know, cameras are used for really two things that I always tell our clients is one, it's, it's a prevention technique, right? It's a deterrent. It, it helps deter that bad guy. Like, Hey, you know, I don't want to go in there because I'm going to get recorded. And the other thing it's used for is investigative tools. So, uh, if you do your cameras and your lighting properly, they're a great tool. If you mess up your lighting where it drowns out that picture and now your camera's useless. So again, when you're doing this, you're do it yourself um, type, make sure you're looking at your lighting. You know, if you have a lamp post and your ring doorbell and the lamp post here uh, is, is behind it, it'll drown out your, uh, yeah. your ring doorbell at, at night. So just always think of your lighting where that placement is and where you're placing those cameras. Going back to the uh, cameras, Isaiah, what is a uh, why is video compression necessary? Um, yeah, so this is something that you see in a lot of ads. Um, they, they talk about the different types of compression. It really has to do with how much data. You know, if you if you have a like a, a nice basic Canon camera, we're all used to taking pictures on our phone, but you have some sort of a Canon or an Icon or whatever, and you shoot that that picture. You know, it takes up a lot of space on that little card. Now you say, okay, well, I want to record 30 of those shots per second. That's a tremendous amount of, of, of data. So what video compression really is in, in, in simplicity is it's only recording the things that are changing. So like if you look at this image behind me, there's a lot of video compression going on. What that's doing is the stuff behind me hasn't moved since we've started. So it's just carrying that math through frame by frame by frame by frame. And I'm moving my hands and I'm talking and that's the stuff that's actually getting recorded. The stuff in the background is staying static and not being recorded. And that's how video compression works. Um, we've all seen it in 
Zoom calls and different things where the compression algorithm goes nuts and, you know, the background gets all wonky or maybe you go out of focus a little bit or something gets blurry or you get those big digital squares. That's really what compression is. And the better systems, the better cameras do a better job of packing that data in so that you see everything you need, but it's not taking up as, as, as much space. Um, and I, I mentioned frame rate in there a little bit as well. That's sort of an important thing is when I said, you know, 30 frames a second, right? You, you, that's part of compression as well is to think about how often it's taking a picture. Um, this is really important for cameras because if you're just taking a still per frame, we've all taken that picture where the car was going by in the background and it was just a blur. Um, that has to do with those two things, compression and, and, and frame rate. If the frame rate's fast enough and the thief is running by the cameras, you can still see who that thief is. If the frame rate is, you know, one that once every second or maybe two or three frames a second, if they're walking very slowly, you will see who they are. <laughs> but chances are they're, they're, they're using that to their advantage and they're running past it. Um, companies like Nest and, and Ring do some interesting things with this. They've, they've taken it from the higher end guys and they have variable frame rate. So before it detects motion or, or in the kind of static state, it's a very low frame rate. And then as soon as it detects motion, it actually turns down that compression we talked about and turns up the frame rate. So you can see the car going by, or you can see the license plate or, or whatever. That's pretty cool. I'm interested in this next question. So, uh, how fast can you run? Right. And that's we're sort talking, of what, that yeah, that's, that's just what we were talking about here yep. uh, with, with a frame rate. But I, I think that's important, you know, of the being able to pick that up. I, you know, sitting here listening to you is like, it's just, it's an, it's a great education. And I, and I hope our listeners and viewers are getting it as well, but you know, frame rate is such an important Thing. And I think posing that question of how fast can I run, you know, how fast is that camera picking that up? Just, I think that's a good thing when you're talking to a vendor uh, that you're looking at, at is uh, posing that question of. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just going to say that. Yeah, I mean, that's actually one of the things that we, we ask clients when we talk about security. If they bring up, you know, surveillance as a concern, it's one of the questions I ask. How fast can you run? And, and that really, you know begins to, to show them and help them ask those other questions. Like if, if you start thinking about it in those terms, maybe a little bigger investment in a camera that does a little better job is more important um, than, than just throwing something up and, and hoping. Um, you know, I think you mentioned just a, a little bit ago, and this is something to, 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 to look at is preventative. You know, these cameras, you should have them where people can see them. Put a big camera in a parking lot, you know, it needs to work. There's lots of lawsuit issues that come if you, you know, have a dummy camera that used to be the classic coffee shop thing is, you know, you have yeah, a little, little fake a little, camera with a little yeah. blinky light, you know, lots of problems come from that. Don't do that. But, but, you know, put it up where someone can see it. That preventative Nate thing is huge. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've seen, you know, video footage of someone walking up to the camera and going, Oh, and then they walk away. Right. So, that that that's super super important. Awesome. I, I this is gonna I, I'm interested in this question because my dad's kind of a conspiracy theory and thinks big big brother's always watching us and stuff. So what are some of the third party access concerns? Like you know, is it easy to hack into a system and gain control of different things in a security system? Or wow, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a really tough question, and and I'll put it into sort of a few categories. Um, there's a really big middle ground of cheap cameras that are network based. Um, and, you know, third party access, number one, you know, it's got to be a really hard to break password, you know, so there's sort of the simple, simple things, right? People use their wives' birthdays or whatever to as a password. That's the simple access. The bigger concern access is is big government and, and the conspiracy theories that you talk about are absolutely real. There are hundreds of cameras from other countries that come into ours that have a backside of them that you can't get to. You don't know what's in there. Um, you know, we test these things, we put them on the network and they're chatting with someone somewhere all the time. Why is that when I'm not even recording anything, right? 
those are big concerns. So I would, I would recommend to people that they stay away from those, you know, sort of cheap off brand cameras. When you have something like uh, Ring or something um, similar to that, uh, there's lots of brands, Arlo, et cetera. They're using a, a back end like Amazon Web Services or, or Microsoft Azure. And those are very secure and very safe. Um, they are as safe as, as you can get. Um, the other side of that is higher end cameras. You know, something $300 and above from a Sony or from a Bosch or from an Axis or a Canon. Those companies spend tremendous amounts of effort to make sure that their chips are all built inside. They're very well taken care of. Firmwares aren't written by outside companies because people can access your cameras. Now, it's not what most people think. I don't think they're trying to get in there to look at you. They don't really care. But you have a thing on the network now that someone else can access. And that's what we want to we want to stop. So again, try and stay away from those, you know, inexpensive sort of offshore cameras and choose either the, you know, the big, the big cheap brand stuff or choose, you know, a, a, a more known brand on the on the upper end. Yeah. Makes sense. So you're saying that the the <clears throat> excuse me, you're saying the camera that Jake put up in his bedroom, nobody's monitoring. I'm sure no one's ever seen it. <laughs> I don't think they want to see it. Well, I mean, you just made this creepy and awkward. Thanks. Yeah, you should you should definitely clean up your nightstand though. <laughs> so uh we've talked about kind of a you know, some doing it on your own and doing it with, through a company. So what what are kind of the things you need to determine whether or not you're gonna use a company or you decide to do it on your own? Uh, well, I think, I mean, honestly, I think cost is, is probably the biggest. Um, it's the val what you value your time. Um, so, you know, the cameras, uh, the, the equipment that's out there is, 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 is basically, you know, it's all the same price, right? So it's can you afford someone to come out and, and put this stuff in for, for you? Um, in, in, if you're like me and you're into this and you tinker with it and you do it, and, and there's lots of my friends who are not in this industry who, who have done their own systems and they've done a really good job. I have a, a, a friend very close to me here who had me come over and just give him some suggestions. Also did a bunch of internet research, watched all the YouTube videos and did a wonderful job of securing his home. Um, you know, he, he, our company is not in his budget and ADT is in, in, in his budget, but buying a handful of Arlo cameras from a, a Costco or whatever, and, and putting in a, a simple ADT security system that sort of, came in a box and you stick it on the wall and you put the pieces in worked really well for him and, and his house is more safe and, and his family is, is more safe. Um, but it's about your time, right? If you, if you're really, really busy, these security systems aren't simple. There are, you know, I joked about it earlier, but there's a big manual that comes along with these things and you need to read it. Right. So figure, you know, the average security system that a professional puts in for a, a basic house, a, you know, 2,500, 3,000 square foot house or below is going to take them a day. What's it going to take you? It's going to take mm -hmm. you, you know, five, six, seven weekends. Do you really want to give that up? Lots of my friends, myself, others would say, sure, let's do it. You know, and, and, it, and that's the thing. If you have the time to do it, I'm sure there are, you know, people out there to help you with, with the knowledge that you need to, to supplement those manuals that come with it. But if not, that's where you really choose a, a company to help you put it in. Yeah. I know I talk about my, uh, my German shepherd as my uh, security system a lot. Uh, so pets obviously are one alternative. Is there any other alternatives to kind of budget friendly for people who don't want to invest in a security system? Um, I mean, I, I so I, I think, it's, <laughs> I think pets are a really good option. I have a, tree house in the backyard and and when my girls stay in the tree house the, the dogs are right there with them because i know the dog's going to be super annoyed if it hears a noise and it's going to wake them up and, and and that's the thing i don't really see any other option than being more careful right yeah. if you can't do the security system you know i i live a little bit out of the city um, before we had security stuff put in you know, I didn't always feel comfortable walking to my car. So put some lights in, look around you. You're, you're the sort of best secondary security system. You know, technology is one thing, but it's not going to save you from being stupid. So, yeah. you know, looking around, figuring out where you're at. You know, if you're leaving your, your office and you're walking to your car, you know, don't just stay on your cell phone and suck on your coffee the whole way there. Take a look yeah, around right. and make sure there's nobody behind you. I mean, there's, 
just simple things that that uh, is the best other option. Yeah. So, Isaiah, as we start to wrap this up, how would you design a security system for the average person or a family? Let's uh, and we'll talk about like a low crime area, a high crime area, and a moderate crime area. Uh, are there differences uh, on how you would do it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, the low crime area, high crime area, and moderate crime area, you know, unfortunately, you know, trying not to keep this, you know, keeping politics out of it, but, you know, unfortunately tends to, to generally be in certain areas of town, right? And so normally the richer areas are going to be the lower crime, um, the poor areas are going to be the higher crime. Um, it, it, it really comes down to um, the kind of thieves that you have in those areas, right? So the, the lower crime areas, um, the, the thefts or the things that happen in those areas need pretty complicated systems because in general, the, the thieves are professional, right? So a low crime area means that if someone's coming to steal your piece of art on the wall, they already know it's there. They know how it's hung. They know where all your locks are. So it takes a pretty significant system to, to guard a house in a, in a, in a low crime area. In a high crime area, you know, the big thing is, is back to preventative, right? Cameras that are big that show signs that say that, that you've got a security system. And then it has to work. It has to be real. You know, um, moderate, that's probably the easiest. You know, a simple security system put in by a professional. A few cameras so that you know what's going on. Um, something at your front door, that, that kind of thing. Um, I think, you know, the high crime areas uh, that, that we have um, and we work in, uh, have really moved towards businesses lately. Um, you know, a lot less of, of house theft and things like that and, and, and much more in, in businesses with the nation in the, in the current state of, of so many people being out of work. You know, simple theft is, is becoming a lot more important to, to guard. So, you know, designing in, in businesses in those is a, is a, is a, is a big deal. Yeah. So uh, as a good breakdown, I, of, the different crime areas. Um, I know where I used to work at, a lot of the people had like, you know, the bars on the windows and the cameras up. And that was all it took to between the two or three houses around the one that had the, the system up the fence and the camera and the, and the windows covered. That's the one that never got broke into, but all the houses around it that didn't have those features did. So. Yeah. 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 So what kind of a new technology is out there for home security before we leave? I know, I, I know you guys do a lot of that stuff. So. Yeah, well, I think you know one of them that that uh, probably is on a lot of people's minds is, is artificial intelligence. Um, a lot of the cameras and things that are coming have 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 really begun to use artificial intelligence to eliminate some of the false alarms and things that are that are out there. Um, you know, motion detector is a simple thing, right? All it does is look at some movement. If I then put some artificial intelligence in there to look at what kind of motion does it look like someone's running? Does it whatever? There's a lot of that that's that's coming, you know, um, and obviously there's some concern there that, that people have, uh, you know, we've all seen Terminator and, and uh, you know, all the different movies. Skynet. That, that, <laughs> Skynet, right. Well, and this is this, you know, this is a little scary, but if you if you uh, heard the news lately, there are uh, seven million cameras. Or no, sorry. Seven hundred million cameras in China. Wow. Um, and that system is called Skynet, which is a little. Uh, I don't know if they meant to do that. Unsettling. <laughs> it's a little unsettling, right? So the AI side of things is, 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 is there's a lot of technology coming there. The other, the other thing is, is cell phones have really made this stuff less expensive, right? And so we're seeing more and more of the high-end technology trickle down into um, the kind of average Joe technology. Simple Safe is a, is a really good example of that. Um, not a huge fan of that particular product because it, tends to not be installed directly going back to the manual side of this, but the technology that's in that stuff is absolutely amazing, you know? And, and I think that's where we're really going to, going to see this, this come. I think the other thing is wireless um, and, and battery driven technology. You know, the, the Tesla scenario, the battery scenario as batteries get better. We can do more wirelessly. So those of us that, you know, go buy a house that don't custom build a house, we can still have good security. We can stick those things up and they're going to last for 10 years, you know, before we have to change the batteries. So I think we're going to see a, a, a continued change in that too. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Isaiah. Where, I, I know uh, Madrona Digital, can you uh, tell where people, 
where they can find you and, and, and your company. And Yeah. Um, so Madrona Digital is here in uh, the Seattle area uh, of Washington, but we do work all over the country um, from simple consulting and engineering on security and entertainment systems and networking and things like that, all the way to coming out and, and you know, boots on the ground, putting this stuff into uh, businesses and homes. Um, really fun group of folks. Uh, everybody has a passion like I do for this stuff and, and a real passion for caring for the customer. And, uh, you know, going back to that earlier thing, you know, when you're choosing a security company, choose the person that listens to you. And I can like uh, attest to, to their professionalism and, and their quality of work. Uh, again, uh, we've used them before in the past. Absolutely. Clients love them. We love them. Um, and this is probably the quietest I've ever been on a podcast, Isaiah. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just soaking it in. I, I feel like I'm in a college like biology class, you know, just like <laughs> uh, tons of info uh, for our listeners and, and, and for physical security guys as well, you know, uh, great. Uh, I mean, you just dumped a ton of knowledge uh, today, so I can't thank you enough. Uh, and again, uh, true professional Madrona digital, wonderful company. Um, yeah, you know, for our listeners, I'm going to re-listen to this podcast uh, a bunch of times. So, Will, why don't you uh, let our listeners and viewers know where they can where they can find this and uh, re-listen to it multiple times, like I do. I yeah, will. you can you can find anything all about us on a uh, coffeesquadpodcast.com. You can listen or watch, access uh, video and audio on our website, or uh, just go to YouTube and search the Coffee Squad podcast, and you can find us there. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. You know, let us know how we're doing. Um, yeah. So, Jake, it's good talking to you. Isaiah, can't thank you enough. We had a great time. Thanks uh, a lot. Great honor. Definitely uh, want you back on. We'll figure something out. We can we can do an episode just on cameras alone, it sounds like. so That'd be yeah. fun. Awesome. Thank okay. you, man. Take care, you guys.